Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Jamaica Politics Uncovered. New subscribers, welcome. Returning subscribers, welcome back. How are you guys doing? Good evening, guys. There's so many unanswered questions about this case. I am going to ask the question out here and the powers that be. Hopefully, they will hear and take heed. We have a few things to talk about, guys. So if you're just joining, please hit the like button. Share the live with somebody and come back so we can get talking. Um, several things on the agenda. Guys, I'm having a little issues with the platform. Me, me and YouTube in a problem, but we're there the same way. You understand? Can you know... We there. We do it for the love, not for the like. Good night, Miss Sonia, Lincoln, Liz, Verona. Good night, everybody. Thank you for being here. So, me no wanna just me. Me no wanna just me see this. Me no wanna just me ask these questions. Is a look? Is a look? Tip me get you know, guys. Me have to come out here and talk to you know, about this. May I pick up one vibe like say that case here it come to a sudden halt. I don't know why that is. We even have a new police commissioner. Yes, we have a new police commissioner. And we not hear nothing at all about this case here. Something is wrong. I guess it's because we know the classism and the Asata ism and ism in Jamaica. We have to put that case to the US State Department because there are more people based on what the powers that be last said. Them say Silvera is not the only one involved. Them said that more people were to be charged for assisting, for helping to cover it up. Me no sound to hear it, right? So here we are, weeks later. Sylvia is going for bail tomorrow. And the case is still under investigation. He's free to get he's free to go ask for bail. But the case is still being investigated, and there's outstanding arrests to be made so how good is that going to be for the public for the investigators and most importantly for melissa something is wrong may i tell you right now says so something is fundamentally wrong the last update we had from fitz bailey about this case is that them even call one woman remember them even call one woman one woman name say maybe she can help my friend the woman big mouth liar come out when we say big mouth me not mean literally what I should have said is loud mouth. From the lawyer talk, the police, them not say anything more. And the police, them in Jamaica must understand that they have a job to do in the interest of justice and in the interest of the people and the victims. So it doesn't matter what the lawyers want to say, as long as only know that only with, is within the right and the guidelines of the constitution, then go ahead and do your jobs. There are more people based on what they last told us who assisted, aided, and abetted. Some questions more have to ask tonight, and I hope the State Department and the FBI they might hear this. The people them will help take off Melissa clothes and put it on and try make the crime scene not look too gruesome. Where them the people there and why they don't charge? People like Alfred does. 
guys want to share the live, you know, please. People like Alfred does, who was called to the crime scene. Did you guys interview Alfred does and ask him who called him and why he went there? Dayton Campbell said he wasn't there, he wasn't in the parish. But Miss Little Bit of Blood, tell the nation say Alfred Dawes was there. Why did Alfred Dawes go there and who call him there? Was he interviewed and asked these questions? All these people, according to Little Bit of Blood, over 30 odd people were at the scene. Or 40 odd. All those people, were they interviewed? The members of the PNP hierarchy who showed up there. Did the police check them phone? Check them messages? All of who were there? Were their phones looked at for see? Who called them there? And what the situation was? Why they, why they all showed up? These are all things that should be done, you know. The person who came and said that Melissa had an aneurysm. Did the police talk to that person? And who is that person? Who is it that saw the little bit of blood at her nose? And who decided to tell Jamaica and tell people like Valrenita that Melissa had an aneurysm. What did they think caused that aneurysm? Were they aware that Melissa was suffering injuries, extensive bleeding? Lots of questions to be asked. And I want to say to the FBI and the U.S. State Department, if they're listening, right? Because I get to understand that this channel is a channel where people really listen to. You see, all of these people, all of these people who were called to Melissa's crime scene, who showed up who did not say anything to the nation for six weeks. But according to Richard Parchment, quote, conventional wisdom, decided that Melissa had an aneurysm or died of natural cause. All of these people who were there, who had their mouths shut, for six weeks, didn't say anything. The U.S. State Department and the FBI should indeed be looking at their visas, should be looking at what role they played. The U.S. State Department should not be engaging should make sure that the United States do not engage these people who want to become health ministers of Jamaica. Those who want to become prime minister of Jamaica who announced that Melissa died in her sleep or died peacefully and gave the nation the impression that Melissa died of natural cause. All those who their wives were called to question and refused to speak with the police. These people are not fit to lead a country. They are not fit to have any diplomatic talks. 
conversations, relationships on Jamaica's behalf. They're not fit to represent our country. They are reckless. They are dangerous. They are lie. They are untrustworthy. They have no regard for life. They have no regard for women. And I strongly believe that the FBI and the U.S. State Department need to have a very serious look at this case because right now I don't know what to say about the JCF. I don't know what to say about the JCF right now regarding this case. Because they are the ones who told the country that them have stones and turned and people more people to charge. So what happened? Are they trying to tell us that Silvera did this all by himself? This elaborate homicide cover up. And only one person charged so far. This is not making sense to anybody. Mark Golding should be called into question. What was he told and by whom? Who told Mark Golden about what happened? He was the first one to come out and announce and gave the country, this is the opposition leader of the country, who gave the country the impression that Melissa died of natural cause. He was the first person to do it. He didn't wait for the police. Richard Parchment talked about conventional wisdom. Mark Golden's conventional wisdom did not tell him to wait and let the police do their job. So we the people now, we are wondering if it is that Mark Golding was trying to cover it up so as to not interfere with his quest for power. Therefore, the Jamaica Constabulary Force should be talking to Mark Golding, should be investigating Mark Golding. They should be looking into the electronic devices of all of these people who communicated, who called each other to the crime scene, who kept their mouths shut, for the first six weeks, but all of a sudden, when they hear the truth come out, the forensic details and the ballistic details, they suddenly come out swinging at the police, swinging at the DPP and everybody, swinging at the morgue, talking about Melissa got hurt in the morgue. They didn't tell us six weeks ago that it was a little bit of blood, nor did they tell us that it was aneurysm because they had a six week window to come up with this lie. They didn't tell us any of this within that six week time frame. Neither did they tell us the true cause of Melissa's death. And so now what? Wanna lock up the man? Yes. And the man is going to seek bail tomorrow. Now what? What about the other people who were involved and what about the extensive investigation that should be taking place these cases of national interest national and international interest and right now as we speak jpu secretaries they're typing up a letter, a three-page letter to send to the U.S. State Department and the FBI. Because this dangerous group of people 
These people who we don't really know about them, we don't really trust them, who are seeking to seize power in Jamaica. We need to know the truth. There's a lot of questions unanswered. So we, we would like to know. Hold on, guys. Let me see. Um, the case is so easy to be solved. Just start with Mark Golding and Valerie Nita. Yes, I agree with that. Mark Golding should not only be interrogated by the police, Mark Golding should also be investigated, which means that his cell phone device should be should have been taken by the police and get those phone records to see who call him about what happened to Melissa and what he was told. Don't tell me that in the year 2024, Jamaica police are afraid to touch the opposition leader. Because if in America, every prosecutor can touch Donald Trump, Mark Golden should be touched in a case where there is a homicide. Little bit of blood. Anushka Bontin. Rachel. Silvera. All their devices should be seized. And the police should investigate them. Even Richard Parchment too. I don't care what Richard Parchment come on social media and say. The police need to investigate all of these people who were at Melissa's crime scene. Don't just take their word for it. Um, Parchment said that he talked to the police. But there should be an investigation. An investigation not just based solely on what they're being told by these individuals. But the police should put themselves in a position that they can either confirm or disprove what they are being told by these people. So if, the, if it is that they lack the sophistication and they lack the brain power, the police I'm talking, and I'm not bringing down the police, but I am just saying, if it is that they lack the brain power and the sophisticated investigate the investigation to investigative tools and sophisticated way of investigating then certainly the state department and maybe the fbi can help them this 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 should not this deserves a thorough investigation because if this case goes to trial, all the evidence that they, they destroyed and contaminated, okay, all of these people that showed up there, destroyed the evidence. So there's a lot to be said by the by the, the, the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Good night, everybody. There's a lot left to be said by the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Yesterday they came out and talked about Leo and them something there. Right now, we need to hear an update. Fitz Bailey, the new police commissioner. We need to hear an update where the Melissa Silvera case is concerned. Because when you don't want to shame, you know, members say, Jamaica right now, kind of, dip on a radar. Yeah, because some things, go, some things are going on, especially with our politics lately. You know, nobody feel like, say, the State Department, no, 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 but what with Melissa, you know, they know, you know. You understand? So because this is such a high profile case, and all these things. Do not 
act like, you know, you want to move like, like you're a snail. Keep the nation updated. Go and interrogate and charge who must be charged. From when you come out and say this woman, I don't know who she be or how she connected to the case. When you come out and say, you don't want to talk to her because she may be, she may be helpful. And our lawyer, Valerie Nita, come out and said something. I only not say nothing more about it. I'm afraid of the lawyers, them in the country. Everybody has a job to do, you know. The lawyer, them has a job to do. And the Jamaica Constabulary Force has their job to do. And as long as everybody's within the guidelines of the law, then you shouldn't be scared. Do your jobs. No. I hope that the powers that be, the Fitzbailey, the new police commissioner, the State Department and the FBI, I hope everybody are here this tonight. Guys, may I be going to share the live, you know. May I be going to share the live because we are get one, we are get one extend, extended we are get one delay. Justice delay is justice denied. That is the vibe that we're getting over here. So, and it cannot go like that. The investigation is ongoing. And the man is going for bail tomorrow. More people to be charged. And the man is going for bail tomorrow. He might have a right to go for bail. But it look like same of him get more done and he move faster and the police them. Wanna tell me if a Sylvia alone by himself carry out this heinous act according to the police, them says him do it. Is Sylvia alone? I highly doubt that. But the police, them also told us that they have more people to arrest and charge. Where are those people? Have they fled the island? Are they bringing food to Sylvia Sunday day time down at jailhouse? Have they done more to cover their tracks? The Jamaica Constabular Force. We need a press conference and an update on Melissa Silvera's case. We need to know why you people have not arrested and charged the other people who helped Melissa to her demise and helped to cover it up. We need to know. The greatest suspicion is the pronouncement of by the colonizer that she died peacefully in her sleep and then his retraction of the statement from the social media platform within an hour of announcing it. You see, if it was in America where Mark Golding did that, two things him do were compromise him and automatically put him as part of this investigation. He's the first person to announce it, yes. Common sense. Me not care. Oh, oh, me not care how stupid you are. Common sense should have told you. Common sense should have told you that when you hear say a woman dead like that, the first suspect is the spouse automatically. Therefore, you do not come out and make any pronouncement. You were not there. You not see all the woman dead. So therefore, you'll allow the process to take its course. But no. Mark Golden run, come out, come announce. 
run, come out, come announce, say Melissa, and, and condolences to Jolian. Condolences to Jolian. Hmm? Mark Golden was not there. Or maybe he was, I don't know. But let me say he was not there. Up at where Melissa was living, the house where she met her demise. Man, I go tell you, say, the woman died, and you got run, come out, come make announcement. Eh? You never did it. After six weeks, the whole owner keep on the mouth shut. On the Nogadi funeral, all on the most suspicious. And then find their way up there, so. They all made their way there. Who call them there? If America, the whole of them phone, the whole of them phone get looked on. The whole of them have to sit down and talk and answer questions before the police. Meanwhile, the police would be giving updates on how they're moving forward with the case. Hello, good night. I'm live, you know. Do you want to call back after I'm finished? Or do you want to talk on the program? Okay. Yes, guys. Sorry about that. So, you see, with everything that is that has gone on with this case, guys, and with the pace at which the JCS is moving, the lack of information, it is time. It is time to... Get some assistance for the JCF because I think they may need some help, right? Because these people, because they're in opposition and they're, they're politically connected, you know, they're wielding their power and they can come out and say, you know, they're not, well, they didn't say that, but action speaks louder than word because they have not dismissed or expelled Sylvia from the, from the party. They have not done that, right? So that alone, that alone is a signal and showing us what is really going on. So because this stench is so strong of cover-up, eating and abetting, right? We not only have to contact the U.S. State Department and the Justice Department, you know, guys. We will contact the EU and the Canadian people, them. the human rights and the women's rights people. Them. Yes, the letter they might type up tonight because them people are half go down. All of who participated in what happened to Melissa after go down. Because you let them get away with something like this. It could be you tomorrow. 
right? So we are gonna give the we are gonna give the JCF some help. Since it look like they need help, we're going to give them some help. This mother of three. What could she have done? Hmm? Them use them, them use them political connection. I hush hush the thing and I make people feel like the boy, you know. Even the pastor, the pastor who presided over Melissa's body. He said that the response is deafening silence. That's what the pastor said. So it's not just we out here on the social media platform. Observe the scent, the silence. He observed it too. And he did not back away or shy away from saying so. Right? So we're, we're, we're going to get some help. We're going to get some help. And the JCF must know, say, there are eyes on the case. The same speed at which they moved to baby Paul Will's case and her mother, I commend the JCF for how they handled that case. This case should have the same energy. We don't care who born in England. We don't care whose parents born in England. We don't care who call themselves Tapanaris and them something there. We are in the year 2024. That may have worked in 1960 odd. Before independence and then sitting there after independence. Right? When the Tapanaris them feel like they're more than the average people and they can do what they want to do. And they can be politically connected and get away with everything. Those days are long gone. And they need to understand that. So we're just calling everybody right now. Every women's organization. Me tell you, you know, from the beginning, you know, me tell you, you know. So me still have my links them to the women's organization from the Americas all the way to Geneva in Switzerland. Women's March. This not supposed to happen to Melissa. And the people them who are investigating is like say nothing else now go on. What are you guys doing? What are you guys saying? Hmm? When I try to tell you say people can go connect themselves with politics and come do them something here to people and not, not come out right? Hmm? And then things are peace and safety. Opposition leader can come tell the country. So the woman died. Peacefully or from natural cause. And then come out and edit what he said. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? That should be a major red flag. He should certainly be called in for questioning. And he should certainly have his devices and everything looked at. And yes, if there's to be a trial, he should testify. This doesn't make any sense. This elaborate cover-up that we have never seen in the history of Jamaica. This major elaborate cover-up. We don't need glasses to see it. Hmm? It's not like say, boy, it was an accidental thing. Okay? It's, it doesn't appear so. You shot somebody one time, maybe you can call that accident. They deliberately, based on the evidence that we see so far, they deliberately took out this woman. Viciously, violently. 
a set of barbarians. And then they come up with their own diagnosis. Natural cause, aneurysm. And thank God for autopsies. And even when we hear that they lied, they didn't tell the truth. They doubled down. They doubled down on their lie by sending out their weakest links to come and tell the nation. Say I was a little bit of blood, one heap of foolishness. Every major country, the US, Canada, Europe, all of them must take away these people travel privilege. They mix up. There's a case to be answered to. They must be interrogated, investigated, and all sort of something. Police call them for come talk to them. Them refuse. Who are they? Yes, man. A full time. Them call everybody for come at the crime scene. Why? I know, look here. Melissa's body was there when some of them showed up. Remember, look a bit of blood, say, she got the but she never go into the room. I must see in the room where the body did the shit attack. Say, she got the yard, but she never go into the room. Nobody not talk, say, they see Melissa's body. None of them not talk. Say they see Melissa body. But they see a little bit of blood though. Our nose. This need, this need every, look here. This need Scotland Yard. This need FBI. This need every investigative bureau in the world for come look on it. Them two lie, man. So I'll be on the one now. Hmm? What are you going to do when you get bail? Because you can't walk in a Jamaica, you know? You cannot walk in a Jamaica with your no head held high. So you're going to get bail and go link up back with your no friend them now. And when time you no come now, you want the farm government now. So then you can't shield and protect you now. A lie on tell. Is lie on our tell. You know, it's a wicked set of people. Yeah, that's all me know. How the hell you gonna have a homicide and police call you and say, we need to talk to you. We need to question you. And you gonna say, you not nah go. Eh? Why? Because your husband a Peter Bunting? Eh? Or is it because you actually participated? Anushka Bunting. Hmm? Rachel Silvera. Rachel Silvera and her husband need to be investigated. We want to know which one of them a walk and a go to doctor for go get false bandolo fraud letter. For Silvera saying sick. Hmm? Which one of them? No one, none of them no one talks and they see Melissa body. <clears throat> none of them no one talks and they see Melissa body. The cleanup team. One must get on a visa tech where one must, one must get investigated. Yes. Give me a second, guys.
Sorry about that, guys. So, these people, they are and should be, or if they aren't, they should be, they should be this a subject of this investigation of this homicide and elaborate cover-up. All of them. All of them who went there. Those who made the announcement. Those who are medical doctors who showed up. It was a crime scene. And the nation was told that she died of natural cause, as, as if to say it was not a crime scene. Okay? So, Mark Golding is an attorney. I want to know why is it that the General Legal Council, they're silent. These are people who are waiting in the wings to form government. They're all compromised. They are all compromised in this homicide cover-up. Jamaica has a violent past, politically and otherwise. And as a matter of fact, right now, this is what we are looking at. This is the homicide rate of several countries in the region. Look where we are. We tops the list. And this is not just a regional data. It says the world's highest homicide rate. We're not at war in Jamaica, guys. We are not at war. But this is what we are dealing with and what we must face. So when we have people who are trying to seize power in our country, who should be subjects of a homicide investigation, we should be very concerned. People who cannot look at the person who is accused, where all evidence so far points to him, people who cannot expel him from their party. What does that tell you? Every major country need to look on this. Every major country, right? When you see the airport and want to go out there and free it for go out there. We don't want them the people fear lead with country or fear rep represent where? When you can't represent Jamaica? When you cannot represent nowhere? When you should even be in the parliament? Uno baga baga, uno must go sit down and go, go, go set up on yourself to, to face a trial because it's very possible. And if there is a trial, all of uno who come out, come make announcement, eh? And come talk about natural cause and all these things, all of uno must go to trial and go testify. Like, seriously, where, where else in the world could this have happened? You have an opposition leader. The guy who debacle him every day like secret service. The guy take out him wife. According to police and according to the evidence, the ballistic. And clearly there has been a cover up because they did not tell the nation what the truth about how the woman died. So there we have it. Look at Giuliani. Look at Rudy Giuliani in New York. Giuliani can no longer practice law in America. Because of the things that he has said, the things that he has done, his political connection with Donald Trump, he's disbarred.
when you ask these risers about why is it that the People's National Party cannot expel Silvera, you know what them said? He's no longer a sitting member of parliament. We know that. But he is a member of the People's National Party and a regional chairperson for the founders group. But they refuse to act. So we are going to have to act by reaching out to some people. We have a turn them radar upon these people, all of them who involve them visa must get take away. I don't know who they think they're impressing. Only you notice know said America no in not with not, not, not with them. America no in not not all with them. Cause them see everything was going on. They know what happened to Melissa. They know about it. Right? But they may not know the underbelly of this cult within the PNP. Right? Them did don't get the warning already, you know. Me tell you already say, when Bunting, when Bunting came after me, it didn't take me long to figure them out, guys. It did not take me long to figure them out. When he paid nationwide to smear me, it didn't take me long to figure them out. And when that happened, I wrote a four-page letter to the U.S. Um, embassy in Jamaica. And I told them extensively that these guys are not politicians. They're a very dangerous group of people. I did. And you see it now? Murder cover up. Jesus Christ, every time I remember. Me never wrong about people. I never wrong about people. Because by their deeds, you shall know them. By their deeds, you shall know them. I found them to be a threat, a huge threat. So much so, I took the time to contact the appropriate authorities about Bunting and those he leads. And since then, the former U.S. Ambassador, Donald Tapia, came out and told Jamaica and the world what Bunting was doing against people, telling lies on people, and reporting things without evidence and without his due diligence, making them get them visa take away. Imagine how many people visa he get take away. The U.S. must take his visa now. His wife showed up to a homicide scene. The police said they want to talk to her and she said no. This is what they are in Jamaica. Since then, since then, since I saw the danger and I saw the brain of these people. See me just show on today, right? Since I saw the brain of these people, I warned that they are not politicians. They behave like a group of people who are extremely dangerous and more so with more power. Those were my words on paper. I don't mess around. This is the MRI image that we spoke of last night. I said I would bring it here and show you guys. Do you see the do you see the front of their brains? There's no there's no major activity going on there to dictate appropriate behavior and boundaries, how how we respect boundaries and how we don't cross certain lines and violate other people. It does not work for them. It does not work for them, guys. 
And when I wrote that letter to the US embassy, it wasn't to be malicious. It was to be a patriot. It was in the interest of Jamaica. Because with more power, look how far media and then try to smear me. Uno where they are Jamaica. What do you think they would do to Uno? They're not good people. They're very dangerous set of people. And even though I saw this, I never imagined what they would have done to Melissa and come out, come tell, be a lie. So she died in her sleep and dead from aneurysm. They're sick. That is their brain I just show now. According to research, these people occupy about 1% of the po world population. So it's not a lot of them. But one thing is for sure, is that birds of a feather are going to flock together. They know their tribe. They know their tribe. They are sick. I say, you don't take it personal with these people. What you do is try and protect other people from falling victim to them. Who would have known and who would have thought? We see them brain long, long time. So right now, the world need to know. They don't care anything about what happened to Melissa. All they want is power. That's what they're after. Power at all costs. Even if it means covering up a homicide. I'm going to switch gears right now. Um, let me talk about them brain guys. Uh, oh, birds of a feather flock together. This is one of them too. We call, this, we call it the financial holocaust of Jamaica. Never before seen. People were devastated. Somebody told me that when she lose her house, she go to this man and say, him can't help her. In the midst of a financial meltdown, people were losing their homes, their businesses, everything. And when he said to her, please help me get back my house, it's alleged that he said, what's in it for me? Always remember this image, guys. No human compassion. No respect for boundaries. For other people. And all these things. Always remember that. And if you, do, if you take this serious, every human being that you encounter... You will start looking closely. I'm not telling you that all members of the politics on one side or the other are this way. I am just telling you what I know of and what these people have proved themselves to be. Right? All right, make us switch gears you now. I want to talk about, um, and I'm going to bring in Liz tonight, you know. Yeah, I'm going to bring in Liz for a little bit tonight. Guys, somebody sent me a video earlier. I cannot show it out here, but I'm going to tell you guys what it's about. I heard that it's in South St. Andrew, but I have not confirmed the information. But I got a video of a quadruple murder. Quadruple. A four man missing on the ground. And a bunch of women running up and down. I think it happened last night. A bunch of women running up and down crying. 
four people one time. I don't know if it has anything to do with the man who was taking out, Mark Golden supporter who was taking out in South St. Andrew a few days ago. The gentleman named Mario. Right? Me hear some vloggers attack some things, but you see true, me not know if I true. Me not going to repeat it, and I don't believe in character assassinating people. I don't do that. I don't believe in it. I know what it feels like when people try to do that to you, so I won't do that. Right? But if you guys want to do your own research or whatever, you can do it, but you're not going to see me post anything women are not sure about over here like that. Right? So I don't know, as I say, if it's a ret retaliation. Because, you know, a lot of the crimes that happen in Jamaica is when justice is delayed. It's been going on forever. Justice delayed, justice denied. So people would have rather take matters into their own hands. Right? And we don't want to see that. I don't know if this person was mixed up. Or in a this or in a that. I don't know. But as I said the other night, guys, I strongly believe that the members of parliaments, especially those who are representing these volatile communities, they need to play an active role in trying to, you know, eliminate the EPA violence kids are living in these communities and i'm not saying that them should go in there and mediate and sit down and talk to no young i don't believe in that you're talking to people who take out women and children you shouldn't be having any conversation with them they should be having conversations with the justice system what i mean is Encourage the people them in the community to get these people from out of them community. Call upon the police. Report them anonymously. You can't even tell them, say, boy, I don't walk through your yard with, with, with them something where they might keep up. Because they turn the gun for the, man, for the people they might kill them. But there, there must be a sustained effort by these members of parliament. We don't want them to go in the community them and uh, get cozy with man and man where them know or them suspect we get out votes for them and the man and man they mix up. We don't want to see that kind of politics anymore. The other thing is Thank you, Wise. See you more so. Hello, everybody. Um, I will get to the comments very shortly. Let me just um finish saying what I'm saying and then we we'll promise me that I'll come show you some things tonight. I have them um here in the studio, and then I will get Liz on and we'll talk a little more. So remember last night I telling us that um I was talking about the Government being up against some very serious propagandists and liars in the country. And the way to combat that is to get a good information apparatus to act on behalf of the country, right? Before even the government, you want your people and your country to be getting truthful information and the government should have a medium where they can explain to the people and speak directly to the people so um i had suggested and some of you agreed that one of the ways to do that is to have a press secretary come out and speak to the nation each day not just on wednesdays and when they come out on wednesdays a people will come out come you know 
they're not giving any information. They're, they're just coming out to be argumentative. How does that help the people? And how does that stop the propaganda and the lies? These things, this try nations, you know, it does. So I heard something. When I made that comment a few days later, somebody sent me a video with the press secretary, Naomi. And she did a one minute, 33 second thing after the budget debate, right? And I think this is so low scale, low energy. It's not even worth my time, but I'm going to show it to you guys so that you can see that they are listening. They are listening, but their response is very weak. Have a listen, guys. Hi, I'm Naomi Francis, press secretary. Take care. So what we suggested over here, guys, was not a TikTok ad. TikTok one one and a half minute ad. There's a there's you can do an ad and you can do a press conference each day for two hours talking to the people and communicating with the people and the press and tell them what the government is up to, what the government is doing, and you take questions from the people who want to ask you specific questions. There's a difference between that approach versus this one minute, 33 second TikTok biz. A TikTok politics on our own or what? Only year, so only is up against a very serious propaganda machine. Only a year. Only a year, so only is up against a, 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 a syndicate of liars. Only a year. Is this how you respond to that? No, no, listen to this. This, this will come out. Uh, so they are information people today. I want to watch this here. Uh. The opinions, you will have a cursory understanding very shortly as well. The opinions of the Attorney General was requested by the Speaker of the House, not by the opposition. The legal advisor, the legal advisor to the Parliament is the Parliamentary Council. You have absolutely no obligation, Madam Speaker to share an opinion from the Attorney General to the government, to the opposition. You may do it because of your good nature, but you have no such obligation. You started your question by saying in light of growing public outrage. <laughs> I do not see any growing public outrage. I see members of the opposition and others seeking to stoke public outrage, right, which has not been stoked. The fact of the matter is the speaker, previous speaker, acted in a particular way. The current speaker acted in a particular way. The current speaker has articulated very clearly the reasoning behind her acting in that particular way. Um, and she... The other thing I want to say to you, the executive is separate from parliament. The minister of information sits in the executive the parliament is a separate part of the governance structure. So it is very challenging for me, do I may offer an observation on a matter related to the administration and management of parliament, as we are constantly accused by others of overstepping our limit and commenting on matters and merging the executive and the cabinet. So on one hand, you cannot say that there's a separation of powers. But then on the other hand, you're asking me to opine on an era that is a separate branch of government. It's actually unfair. Let me ask you a question. At a time like this in Jamaica, I hope you hear what I'm saying. I'm saying the information minister. I don't know how you can have a member of parliament and information minister in a one. I don't see how that makes sense. Right? At a time like this when the voter apathy and the, the apathy to participate in our electoral process is so low, 
why would you be hostile toward transparency? If Juliet Hone sought an opinion from the AG, there's nothing wrong with sharing that with the opposition or the country. It's an opinion. You want to promote transparency, and this is why Jamaicans are so up. Them no want nothing to do with voting and politics. So you know, see what I'm going. Why are you being hostile toward transparency? You should be glad to say, hey, here it is. People don't trust you know, when you don't want to behave that kind of way. Let me just tell you the straight enough people. Let me just tell you, you see the biggest threat, as I say in the caption here um, on the show here tonight, the biggest threat to Andrew Oles' re-election is his wife and his Information Minister. Yes. Only know I'm not gonna talk with water in my mouth, you know. I only know say me I just tell you know, as it is. I don't know how they want to take it. I don't really care. I'm just speaking my truth. They are the biggest threat to him. An information minister should be speaking to the country each day and telling the country what's on the prime minister's agenda. The prime minister's traveling today. You know, he'll be breaking ground for this. He'll be addressing that. He'll be meeting with this person, that kind of thing. And then the press is going to be in the room asking them questions and you answer them politely. You don't be confrontational. You don't play victim. You answer them straightforward, truthfully, and correctly. And as the information minister, I don't think you should be in parliament arguing with anybody. It's not your job. Your job is to make sure that the people of the country are informed. And that the liars and the propagandists them that are out there looking at scandal for take down the government because that's all they do. Because they don't know any other way to convince the people that they are the ones to lead them. So they are, they are scandal hunting. So when you, when you, when you get confrontational and get hostile upon people and them sitting there. Mr. sorry for the condition look on need some shampoo. Juliet Ones now. Before Juliet Ones come off of the speaker bench and give her husband the room to do his job. She's a constant eyesore in the parliament. And that is not good for her husband. Any smart wife who has the interest of her family, her husband and his legacy since he is the prime minister, wouldn't even think about sitting up there as a speaker. And it doesn't matter, doesn't matter that the other side said, yes, go ahead. You should know that once you are up there as the man's wife, you're going to have to take heat, right? And you, people, people are going to say, watch your husband and wife around the country, husband and wife around the parliament, the two of them, have the two most powerful positions in the, in the parliament. I don't know if you have sense, man. Are they, are they, they are the two biggest streets. So I can't go and go tell them say, say so. Because I know what big and bad and brave over here. So. They are the two biggest streets. I don't know if Andrew Wallace has the... I don't, I don't know if he has, has what it takes to, you know, understand what is going on. And um, get a press secretary. And see, if you have a press secretary, you don't need an information minister. You really don't. Because your press secretary is not going to be in the parliament and should not be in the parliament. Your press secretary is supposed to focus solely on information. Right? Just like how Naomi, here we say over here, so I say, 
the Prime Minister want one press secretary and no found one nominate Venetia. Just like how they can't hear with talk, so I run go, run go talk things are rare. When I forget people with cut with caliber, man. Get some people with caliber. You cannot be up against some of the lies, some of the lies, wickedest people in the world. And yeah, 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 those sound like sitting where no make sense. Do things what make sense? The country is depending on you to do what is right and save them from them, them a bag of people here. You don't have a duty. I only need to do it right. This is not what Jamaica deserves. This is not what Jamaica deserves. We never want the next generation and people with a conscience, with human compassion, people with integrity. We don't want nothing we're connected to Finsack and them something there. Because them, they are not art, you know, to see what they do with people, them, you know. Then don't have no art. May I tell you no? Let me get Liz on the call, you know. Hi, Liz. Hello. Good night, Liz. How are you? Can Good. You hear me? Yeah, man. Good. How are you? Thanks, him. Watching news and listening to you. Okay. So, boy, we come out with a we come out with a mouthful tonight. You know, the first thing is um for those of you who are just joining the program, everybody's supposed to know Liz by now. But I'm gonna introduce her because I see some new names in the um in the chat. This is our correspondent, our political correspondent, social and everything in Kingston, Jamaica. Liz. Liz Liz follow the news. She follow everything that is going on in real time and she will communicate that with JPU and she is qualified to talk about it. Liz is one of the one of the most popular contributor, radio contributor from the time of radio, just radio in Jamaica. So, you know, we're happy to have her here. So Liz, we're talking about um, the pace at which this case has, has been going since the arrest of Silvera and since Melissa was buried. And we're saying that right now, you know, we're going to get our secretary to type up some letters and send them out to some people, including the Justice Department here in the US, the EU, Canada, and all those people, and tell them about this tragedy that took place and the lack of uh, update, the, the people, they must, the other people they were supposed to get charged, the fact that the opposition leader made the announcement, you know. I personally think his phone should be invested. He should be he should be called and should be the subject of this investigation. All their devices, all who communicate and all them something there. Them not me not feel like say them are treat this at this point like a serious investigation, including everybody who came and contaminated the crime scene and all these things. You understand? So we are so right now. We are help the JCF because it look like say they want help. That's our first thing. Um, I guess you okay. could you could chime in if you've been listening, uh listening in before I yes, call. I, yes, I have been. You hearing me now clearly? Yes. Everybody yes. hearing me? Yeah, man. Okay, good night. Good night to everybody. Um, I hear you uh I've announced a list of person you're writing a letter to. I think one of the most important bodies that we have left off is the ICC, the International Criminal Court. I think okay. you should write to them also. Okay. Mm -hmm. And possibly the United Nations 
do my nice counseling. Of course, yes. No. And the women's the women's women's um right to life organizations. You know, I was affiliated with the women's march organization. No, um there is a um today's April 10th. And there is a there seems to be uh what you call it now a political high profile power exerter in this whole matter. Mm -hmm. To just briefly look at the situation, there was a high profile murder case involving wife, son, and husband in um I think it was in the early nineties. Um and um the, the, the case um the, the wife and the son was um was re uh, uh, released. They they, they 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 were given they were they were not they were charged, went to the court, but nothing came of it. They were released, they were freed. And I am um, looking at this, it had a it had a powerful power broker from within the People's National Party getting a role behind the scenes. And here again we have it seems to have the same characteristic features. But one of the most important things that came out of all of what we have heard so far, why did um why did the arrested um husband call the opposition leader and why did the opposition leader leave his house to go to the murder scene when he knows that you can be charged as an accessor to the fact before and after why did he do that and you know as i said there seems to be a particular power player in the interest of having not willing not being charged by the police because if what we have had we have had so far is that Mark Golding is critical to the to the murder scene. The murder, the actual murder in the murder scene because he he actually went to the murder scene while the body was still there. When did he make that announcement again? Do 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 do, do you or anyone recall if it was the night? Of the tenth, uh, or was it the day of the eleventh? Can somebody please remind me? If Mark Golding made, think, if he made the post on on Facebook, the tenth of November, or was it the eleventh in the morning? I think he made it. He, he, he probably, if I if I if I can recall, it probably came to the news on the night the night of the murder, the night the tenth. Sorry. And uh, uh, he was the first um, person that was mentioned having issued a statement that she died peacefully in her sleep. So he must have been on the scene very early and he must have seen the body. You know? But there seems, as I said, there seems to be power in the capacity of ex or retired prime minister. There's somebody's exerting tremendous power in this case matter in the interest of Mark Jefferson Golden. All right, we won't say any more on that. Now they um you spoke to the, the last issue a while ago. We go into the others in the middle, we come back to it. I was listening keenly. The situation with the um the whole message and the country is a very serious matter that most persons are not the population of voters, 2 million, not paying keen attention. At first, when you listen and you examine the entire situation, it seems as if, and it's not a sly or a political, but it's what seems to be appearing in the public space, is that in the family home of the whole missus, the lady are, quote unquote, non close quotation, the lady is a boy. She's the boys. And that situation is being transferred parliament. Now, the Minister of Information is clearly ignorant of the Constitution. The executive is an employer, employee, sorry, of the public. 
of it goes to the polls, they vote. When they vote, the winner, the party that wins, select the who is going to be prime minister, mm. and the prime minister then selects the cabinet. So they are all employees of the public. So when he's going to make an ignorant statement that the and all 63 members of government, right? Mm. They are employees of government, but the government is the people. But all 2 million voters can go negotiate with government all over the place. So you pick a uh, individual, 63 of them. Or you have an opposition side, or you have the governing side. So his ignorance is on display and the nation. That's why I keep saying we're in our earlier program. We must get the PMP government. One of the first thing Ministry of Education must really implement is the teaching of civics in school. Because this Minister of Information is ignorant. The government the government the whether then the government whether they know can do it to but let me ask you a question before you go on this. All that thought. Do you agree that um, Juliet and the information minister here, don't you think that they are a huge threat to Andrew Wallace? Andrew Wallace is a threat to himself because, first of all, his wife should not have been in the parliament. So, he as I said, he is the he's the he's wearing the apron and she wears the balls. She should not have been in the parliament. <laughs> She is the one no, she's bringing so. the home domestic situation she has brought into the parliament. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, she's um she's aggressive to any female that um is doing their job, um like a turning the audience I think about and doing their job um correctly, constitutionally and with effective efficiency and uh, integrity. And that it cannot suffice. So he, they both are not the threat to me. He's a threat to himself because he needs to, um, he needs to to stand up, uh, to, to stand up and be prime minister of Jamaica, and not the husband too. Juliet Holmes in the house, right? And the minister of information needs to be um. Needs to be given a book on the Jamaica on civics. Well, I don't think that the person that's going to be. I don't, I don't, you see, if anybody should have an information yeah. minister, me not, me not think, me not think it's a necessary role. Me feel like, say, if you have a good press secretary who is on the job every day in communication with the people, you do not need an information minister. Do away with that role. Do away with that role. We don't care if it happened at the past. Get a press secretary. They can do all of that, plus all the real-time stuff, right? And they should not be a member of parliament. Their job should just be solely to focus on information and communication with the country each day, Monday through Friday. What is so hard in that? Them listen. And then here we are talking about it over here. And Naomi come out and say a thing or two. Them, them, I don't think that they are competent enough where they are ready to act like a first world, you know, government with people where called press secretary doing the job of a press secretary. And a TikTok politics. You can't run TikTok politics. See, then cost Mark Golden over TikTok, then cost him away. Two weeks ago, then cost Mark Golden one woman over there say, in the pan TikTok every day and him take down our something and carry our parliament, all them something there. The thing is, you know, the parliament and the politics of Jamaica has been bought. And so, having, having been bought, this is the mediocrity that you are getting. And that is why you first, you're going to have to. The next government, all right, the next, let me be a little bit apolitical here. The next PNP government, there are certain things and certain rules that is going to have to be, it's a hell of a task to lay ahead. But we must remove the politics from the corruption of the money, the tapanaris there, because having 
the, polit the politics being bought. Mm -hmm. being bought. Yes. This is why we are getting this mediocrity in terms of service ignorance. The Minister of Information is ignorance is on display. The, the fact of the matter. So you're saying that the, you're saying that the, the information the, well on the list, you're saying that the information that Juliet Olness, as the House Speaker, sought from the AG, she should have shared it with the Parliament? She's an employee of the country. The Parliament is the country's business. The AG, the Auditor General, the report was on two government entity. She is not, it is not her husband's personal letter when she find him right to a girlfriend or somebody else. It's That's what I said. When I hear him say that, I said, Mr. What? So, what, like I'm saying, you, you basically are saying that, you know, you are, you are entitled to have some form of secrecy just because you are the speaker. What can go so? You're supposed to come in here and yeah. share the information with everybody. Mandatory yeah, to. She doesn't have that any, there's no secret. In the people's business and the pe in the parliament is the parliament of public. Yes. Vote and go to the public. It's the people's business. This is not our private home and our private domestic affairs. So all of that is ignorant and un uneducated, um, unsophisticated behavior of people who don't understand the civics or the politics of the country. It is not there being once you enter garden homes, whether the Senate, mm -hmm. which you are appointed to, are elected to the lower homes, you are an employee of the public. It's not even employee it's not alone, they must servant. The thing, eh? Not just employee, they must servant of the people. They forgot them for always consider that. Yeah, employees of the government, mm -hmm. of the country, of the people. So I mean, uh, that talk there a while ago, that talk they just you see how important it is, guys. Um, how you surround yourself and who you surround yourself by. Me tell you, say no, if you not surround yourself with people, what makes sense? People, give me your own friend, them with tear you down, you know. You understand? If your own wife, though it may not be intentional, they may tear you down. You have to be careful. Today, today I saw an article in. The newspaper in a, um one of the large companies where the CEO has to resign because she's having a relationship with an employee of the com of the company. Also. Which part? No, in I don't I, I can't take it up now because I'm talking to her only. Maybe. Oh, mm -hmm. but I will I will still stand here. But even in the private sector, even in the private sector, husband and wife. And usually in the two top tier job of, of, of the company because there has to be a conflict and it may cost the company extensively or expensively. But the politics of the country has gotten so corrupt, so vile, so criminal because of the massive infusion of money, tainted money. Yes. And we as a country is going to have to determine for example, I was saying to Comrade Lisa that when she becomes head of the PMP and um, Prime Minister Jamaica, one of the things she must have done, every person coming to their candidate at local government to be appointed to, a, to the Senate and to be elected as MP, you must get a comprehensive police report both nationally and internationally, and the person must present that. Well, Liz. Liz, well, Liz. Well, Liz. Let me answer the lady here. Precious soul, I take it you are a JLP. That's okay. Yes, sir, until now, I can't tell you what Juliet Olness did wrong. The reason why, because I don't want nobody to come feel like say, me, I bring her down because she's a woman. Or if, anybody who know me, mm -hmm. then... Them know so that is not my style. What my style is, is to be truthful and fair and honest. You cannot, where else in the world, want to see husband and wife 
in the house of parliament. Which party else in the world will see that? It does not happen. And it does not happen because it is not right. Okay? That's the first thing. What Juliet Ones did when we were really and really and truly, because I'm mean, the first blogger with talk that she should not be up there as a speaker. I don't give a crap if she was elected or not. She's supposed to know, say, what she's going to do is compromise the politics and her relationship, even, and her husband. When we see how that woman there were working at the parliament, the CEO of the parliament, Miss Curtis, in there for 30, 30 odd years. She's also a lawyer. Juliet Owens just came in the parliament with you and just sit down up there as speaker with you. And imagine if she felt like the lady did something wrong. You talk about where Juliet did wrong, where Miss Curtis did wrong. You, you can tell us. And when I read that letter of how she spoke of Miss Curtis, it was very disheartening. That's the first thing. The fact that the letter became public or that, e that the letter was even sent to other members of parliament is absolutely disgusting. The woman was retiring. Hold on a second, Liz. Let me, let me finish okay. my thought. The woman is retiring. She's been in there 30 years, longer than Juliet Olness. Right? And she's a lawyer. So what is it that the lady could have done that, that would have warranted Juliet to respond in such a vile manner. She's rude. And she may be taking this power thing a little bit too far because her husband and the Prime Minister. Oh, no, can't come bully me for talk the truth, you know. You understand? Me not, me not, me not be extreme. Me not judge her wrongfully. Me I talk the truth. Over here, so it's a truth channel. Uh -uh, I don't like you. Don't come over here and ask me no damn foolishness. Use on the head. Right. Yes. Let's help her understand what she did wrong. The Speaker of the House is an employee of the lower house and an employee of government via the electorate. The clerk of the house is an employee of the Ministry of Public Service. She's an employee of the Ministry of Public Service or of the Governor General's um, appointment um, situation. And remember, the football, she's not an employee of the Speaker of the House. She doesn't work with the Speaker of the House. She works with the Parliament. She's a clerk of the House, not a, work, a secretary to the Speaker. Two. The Speaker of the House has no authority to tell the parliamentarians and the public I will not be tabling the report from the Auditor General because also the Auditor General is a commission of the government of Jamaica, which is a commission of, to the people of Jamaica. So he has no such power legally, illegally, Whatever she, the speaker, has no such power to tell the people them that she not went to be able to think as all sixty-three persons are employees of the state, the public. She had take a joke, Liz. You know, feel like she had take a joke too far from where do you? Not only that, she is behaving as if she is a dictator and she is the governor general of the country this is why i'm not like this is why i'm not like tribe i'm not like tribalists i'm not like tribal politics you know because you see when the truth for talk we as individuals we as members of society and patriotic people we must can come down with the truth no matter which side we depend so let me just tell some people over that channel here is not just a channel for cosmo golden is a channel for all everybody accountable you hear me i tell you no I tell you already, you know, say over here, so it's not on a channel, you know, all of the tribalists, them over here is a truth channel. If you don't come about you, I don't care about no politics, you know. If you don't come for your truth, you don't know come over here. Come I swear to God, I don't run down no followers. But well, the thing is, they must learn, they, they must get more, they must read more, begin to read more, understand the politics. It's not that they must just run go polling station. An election, you wish election, you just mark your eggs. You must understand why 
how, when, for whom. You must understand. There are several million people. Must I know? Um, me not think, and I'm not meaning to demean anybody. I don't think this set of voters are as bright as the previous years and elections past. No, Liz, you're not for say that. Liz, eh? you're not for say that. And you know why you're not for say that? Because as you can see, the voters of today, they are not coming up. They're not in nothing with them people here, yeah, more than so. So at least give them some credit. At least well, give them some credit. Right. But, but they're not coming out, you know. They're not coming out because of frustration. But if them, when somebody going to ask you, what did she do wrong and don't understand the proceeding of our parliament and the constitution of our country, then that is serious. Because she was told, right? She even sought advice from the auditor, the solicitor general, who is also an employee of the public, of the government, which is the people. And he told her, he gave her the correct um, um, legal advice. And she decided she went with fair way. And that no go so Juliet Oles is not boss for nobody, not even herself, because the people them up at Israel St. Andrew is politically educated the right way, them vote around the next time come. Me not understand them be you, you could have you could have really in our country. You know, see them are sitting here going nowhere else in the world, right? Me tell no, them no, say no, something, no, some no, things no, go on no, in no. Jamaica, you know. And you see, sometimes we as Jamaica, we are damn enablers, and we must stop it. We are in the world, let's say husband and wife are come out say them all the most powerful position them in the parliament and they're sitting there. It is wrong. I don't care what I don't care if the opposition says she should be there or them okay with it. You see them come now, come turn them up because they realize that the people of the country, there are many people who are talking about it. They may not come out here and talk about it like some of us, but there are people who are not comfortable with it. And these are the people who are the voters. So if one thinks only can come take arrogance right and as much as i want to see mark golden daddy no no one damn thing or what a clock a strike eh imam but imam uno do uno no compare your contact boss say mrs smart in the comment at our boss say at our boss say pmp come to power when as if to say it is totally impossible it is not impossible get a whole on the list whole on the list get a whole of yourself people as much as all these two people here are very grossly not qualified, unfit, I would be the first to say it. Don't come on here, come talk about say it's impossible. Because the people them are so apathetic that anything can happen. You do not understand that. Now, the most dangerous part of this is, do you want your people to be so apathetic that... When the poll close at the next election, and them are two people here come and lead, you know? Them are two people who destroy the people in economy in the 90s and do the things them. Get a hold on yourself and stop playing arrogant, you hear? And the same thing them it say when Ro and Rhoda Crawford take away bunting seat. The risers them laugh her to scan. And I say, look at that. And she did right. it as a political novice. So only nobody come with no arrogance. Humility is very important, right? Very. Okay. When you not have look, when you go and go look it up, the pros and it's cons, true. the pros and cons yeah. of uh, of uh, an electorate that is not motivated and that is apathetic. This is where you find some of the most unscrupulous people them coming come get power. When you know no politics before you come over here, so. True, but in history shows. 1980 result 60 seats. The PMP won nine, one female Porsche and eight male. So it is sent and Seymour, the great late great Foggy Mullins. Seymour, Seymour Mullins in South East Center. We have never lost it. And and JP won 51. Edward Sarah became Prime Minister. 30 October 1980. By 1982. The man, the, the Seattle administration began to crumble two years in office. On December 15, 1983, one of the most powerful political decisions was taken on East Street 
in the NWU headquarters. Michael Manley told all who was present as I, I was there, I was in the mix tonight, upstairs. I listened to everything keenly. Michael Manley told the other eight uh, MPs, I will not be going to the polls. And it was a heated educational debate. But he decided he would he wish them well. And he said, I am not going event to the polls. Eventually, all eight agreed and the pmp walked away from nine opposition membership and seven eight senators when the pmp did that the whole country cried out no no you have left us to a dictatorship the people's national party from december 15 1983 to february 9 1989 was not in garden house not anywhere near the building and I had no senators. See, I'm going alone around the country for six years now in the opposition. And the PMP won power again in on February 9, 1989. 45 seats and defeated Edward Siago, who had the country all by himself. America gave us 800 million US dollars as aid package. First time in their history, they had that with no strings attached, really. Let it's me ask. The largest donation to any state, and the PMP took back office and re and was in office for eighteen years. So when this person talk about PMP come to office, when all your asses, guy, you don't know your history still neither. The JLP will never ever try that. Walk away and leave we alone. Somebody so say if Donald back. Trump can become president, anybody can become president. Yeah. Um, yes, Liz, somebody say. You are going to vote for them. Would you will you go vote in the next general election for Bunting and Gold in them? No, no, because I'm expecting I didn't vote in the part in the, the first time in my life, you know. I did not vote in the local government election for the candidate in the cash apart division where I live. I didn't go to the polls and I'm not afraid to talk. The candidate that came up on the PMP ticket is a riser, and I cannot. You see, that would be going against Norm. I would be voting. If I had gone out to vote, I would be voting against Norman Manley, the founder. And Norman Manley has been called. He's a national leader. Okay, so you will not, so you will not be voting for them. I not vote and vote. So you will not be voting. I will not be voting in the general election either. Okay. All right. Well, oh, yep. Natalie, um, you said something also about... um. I was the second item again. Um, geez, I'm back with that. And there was two other things you mentioned. But you know, um, just to, before you leave us, just for the, the persons listening and commenting, the situation in our country right now is crucial. Today I heard something with I listened to public eye on 99 FM running tweets and um Colonel Charles Senior as co-host. And I learned that there's an agreement where the Israelis are across the globe in several countries and they are doing terrible things in terms of natural resources. Uh, it was in Congo. I don't remember the African country where they are employing children to dig, to work in mine, and the government have to shut up. But in a fast hour when I appeared. They also have an agreement, and the per it was about foreign affairs and why we are so dumb. And I was shocked to learn that the Israelis have made a, an agreement has been signed between this the present administration and the Israelis to offer security services, security for our country. But Jamaica government dare not open their mouth. I said one word, a letter, the word is A, the letter is A, about the situation that is being administrated. I dished out to the Palestinian people. I was shocked when I heard it. Well, um, this is why it's so important to have a press secretary, because even with what Liz is saying about the Israeli and the security, these are things that, you know, you want your, your press 
and your journalists to be asking the government and they should respond. So you see, Jamaica are ready for first world, you know. I don't mean I get to realize, you know, Liz. No, for see, for real. We're not, we're not ready for first. You see, wait, what politics is the most underdeveloped thing in the country? You realize that? For the last eight years, yes, it has been. But the press, the, the parliament, that is supposed to be debated in the parliament, you know. That agreement is an issue for the country to know. But the country don't know that that agreement has been signed with Israel. It is serious, Natalie. So when people come and jump on you about what you like do, our people won't come to office again. Them don't understand the average person in the street, not understand where. It is, in fact, we can wake up tomorrow morning now, the whole nation, and say Israel is around the country. That is how serious the situation and that signed agreement is. They are and you see, people. I can't so, even really comment. I can't even comment on what you just said because I'm not, I'm not aware of it. No, I'm not saying that I don't believe you. I'm just saying I can't comment on it because I have not heard of it and I don't know where to go to get any information on that. And this is why when them say them have information minister doing what? Get a press secretary to come. At the last time, I tell them, you know, I you see if they don't hear and if they don't act, you know what I reach them? You see the propagandist them and the vicious vile liar them in the country where they pass social, where, where Bunting and goal in them put on social media that they are going to be their downfall. Remember, me telling you, Liz, I will talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. May I close out? You, you, you mentioned briefly Bunting demonstrating. <laughs> Just briefly, for the public, page six of today's observer, I think we should turn and look at what the PMP should think about. I have the video. I have the video. I'm going to show it to them. I have the video. I'm going to show it to them. Yes, all right. Thank so, you. Tomorrow. Yeah, man. Thank you again. Always welcome. All right. Yeah. So, guys, we should not develop this habit. We should not develop this habit. Based on some of the things said in the comments tonight, we should not develop this habit where we become so arrogant. And one of the worst things that we can do is to be arrogant, right? I understand that in order for the government to lose the next election, the worst politicians in our history on the opposition side, they have to win 18 seats. Yeah, they have to win 18 seats. We understand that. And we understand that it may seem impossible based on their performance, based on the darkness that surrounds them and shadows them, based on the fact that they can't even write a budget speech. They write an attack speech, personal attack on all them something there. They come out with a, with a so-called, quote, good governance speech instead of a budget speech they are not politically intelligent we get that but do not underestimate the impact of what a demotivated electorate can do when you have a little bit of people that come out to come elect the next government. You understand the maths, no man? One of them night you are going to come out and contact you and show you all the possibilities of when your people are not participating in your politics. It is not to the people's benefit. Let's, let's just say that. If anything, it is more to the benefit of people like these who come with nothing to tell the people. People like these, who are just unscrupulous figures in our politics since the 90s, who benefited greatly from the demise and the destruction of our economy and of our financial situation. It is to their benefit when the people do not come out. 
When the sensible people them look on the political climate and look on the situation and say, no, sir, me not left my yard for this. And they have a benefit. So, when you can't stay there in our arrogance at all, but, uh, when PMP will come back to power. Take a stock of yourself, people. And I'm not saying that to be demeaning. I am saying that to say we should all pay attention to what is going on. This election that is coming up is perhaps one of the most, probably the most important election since modern history in Jamaica. These guys have no business running a country. They are dangerous. See them like oh Donald Trump dangerous. This, these people are dangerous. Me no need for sure on no, nothing. We know enough. All of you who pay attention. Uno come over here, so because uno interested in the politics. Right? I don't want to hear about politics and they sitting there. So I don't know, uno know about politics already. So we now have to go down in it. You understand? Just look at the condition of the opposition party. Look at the way they carry themselves, the fact that they can't talk, they not articulate. Look at the people in the party where they run away and put themselves up front. Look at them too. Put themselves up front. They don't play nice. These are some nasty, cutthroat, some vicious individuals. Them have to win 27 seats. Order match they go. Are we in a fall? Them have to win 20, 27 seats. Order the match they go now. Them are 14. Right now. Nobody come mix up my brain in a night, you know, Andrew. This election may be full of surprises if Jamaicans don't wait. May they stay there. May they stay there. I want thing me learn, you know, from being an athlete. Me used to run a Jamaica, you know. And I'm a big sports fan. One thing me know in a life, you never, ever, underestimate your opponent you have to always go out there and put out your best let me tell you something yesterday yesterday local election will just pass and your owners and the government they never lose okay let's let's make that clear they did not lose but the truth of the matter is they should have wiped out these guys Andrew, them should have wiped out, mark them. Come mark them on a politician. Mark them not understand. They not tell the people them not going to make sense. All them depend. Andrew corrupt. Andrew this. Andrew that. That's all them I walk and talk, say. And them my biggest corruption, friend of the 90s. What them and Omar Davis do to the people of this country. And what them do to their own party, you know. They my biggest corruption. But I think what Andrew Olness did was to underestimate them. By coming out and campaigning, what, three days before the local election or two days? You don't do that. You come out and you run your best election every time. That's what you do. And that's what he didn't do. I'm sure he learned from it. He'll be doing some things a little different next time. But I don't think Andrew Wallace wants to win. He's not acting like he wants to win. For somebody who is facing a general election in about a year, he don't want to win. Mark my word, you know, guys. Right now, as I sit here, 10th of April, Andrew Wallace is not moving like he wants to win. Andrew Wallace is not moving like him, understand. So he is up against some liar, 
some wicked people. And therefore, you have to bolster yourself to compete with the likes of them. He doesn't get that. I don't care if anybody want to be offended. And you know? they shoot me attack. And no found a pious and no say I shoot me attack too. You see, my position and my stance, guys, is a patriot. And that's why, that's why um, me can't talk my mind, right? And talk it truth and talk it forever. Because he's a patriot first. And me rather just talk it like it is. Me not tell Andrew Sam for God they go wait no war upon nobody. Come and I believe in that. But I believe in being smart. Okay? I don't believe as a patriotic Jamaican that we must go from bad to worse in terms of leadership in our country. Some of you may feel that Andrew is bad. And I will say to you, why would you want to go from bad to worse? And if you feel that them, the people there, the golden and bunting among us, that they are better, tell us why you think so. I guarantee you, anybody who feels that them better, I would have bring on, I would have bring on three of uno against me alone upon this platform here. Yeah? And none of uno can come tell me why bunting and golden them better than Andrew Ones. I would have bet on my life saving. Nothing but because of tribalism. Me no believe that Jamaica figure from bad to worse. Me no care when no other vlogger out here say. Me no pay attention to when no other vlogger say. I yes, so me pay attention to. Right? And for 400 and odd people to be here listening, I think you guys may be interested in what I have to say. And you know, I'm saying that with a sense of humility. I appreciate your ears, your attention, right? But just understand, say, over here, sir, we're only coming from a place of patriotism. We do not want to go from bad to worse. As I've told you guys before, I think Andrew Onis is doing the job best he knows how. If he knew any better, he'd be doing better, Okay. And as we know, those of us who are students of politics, as we know, your government is going to perform as good or as bad as your opposition. You don't understand what I just say? Your government is going to perform as good or as bad as the opposition. Let that sink in. I don't mean nobody out here no arm, guys. I just come out here to help inform. Right? And help to kind of create a better Jamaica. Me no say, me, 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 me just a, a vlogger here. You know, but it's important to have these conversations. You know? And I know that a lot of these people, they listen over here. And even some of the vloggers, them who don't agree with me, are who, who they out here, I beat down one person every day, and who have them agenda, they may be here listening too. But just know every time, say, a Jamaica may I deal with over here, so we I deal with over here, so first. May I talk to the, the people, them who lie all over here. So just to recap, guys, the police commissioner and Fitzbailey, them and them people, them for no say right you now. We are just do you see as 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 activists, right? Because I consider myself a a women's activist. I've always been, you know, I've done my my work in activism. And just understand, say see right you now, we are just start dealing with some international people. Where Melissa is concerned, come me not me not me not get this sense of urgency that we should see in this case here. You understand? And I'm not trying to do it to embarrass Jamaica. 
But by God, Melissa is going to get justice. I mean, I talk about no barefoot justice. I talk about some serious justice. All of who participated, they're going to be fingered. So, JCF, me sorry. You need to start to do something because you see when the people them start to look for no? and start to take away the people them visa, we're involved in others. They are going to know. You know? That's if they are know already. So when time that happens, nobody can come see nobody and undermine you. You can undermine yourself. You can come see a woman, mother of three, come dead just so. Right? And you have opposition leader who come out and give wrong information about the woman dead. Eh? In friend them not expel him from the party. All of them will get called for go up a no man crime scene and then quiet six weeks and they sit. The whole of them are subject to investigation. And if you treat them as such. So I'm going to, I'm going to hear more about this. And the next thing is. And your oldness, if you are listening over here, the two biggest threat to your to your to your prime ministership and your chance of re-election is your wife and your information minister. You, sir, man a man, man must stand up like man. You're supposed to can do the assessment and make the right decision, right? If you care to lead the people them again, are the truth. And I have already gone, I have already explained it, right? So you can rewatch our in your people them over here. Me gotta start the truth, you know. No harm, no fall. Jamaicans have been disappointed so much. By politicians. Yes, you can go tell Andrew say me say don't want to win back. Right? We live in a time of information. Don't you dare underestimate the power of propaganda and lies. Okay? There's a reason why Peter Bunting and Mark Golding take up the people in we can lie, get up and lie every day. And get up and cuss people every day for no goddamn reason. Tell lie upon people. There's a reason why they pick those to be on social media. Understand that. Understand how powerful the information is. Only think I became a good blogger. Only thing say me can me could have come over here and grow so fast. You have to understand how the world work in at this time here. Some of us, we you know, we kind of we're not too savvy with this um new information era, information age. You understand? But I have seen the works of how people use social media, or people who are bad for social media uses social media and the good that can be done with social media. Hear this, hear this a fool you know. I may have to call you a fool in a lie. I have to call you a fool. Andrew cannot lose. I didn't never argue with you. I assume I never argue with you. Maybe he don't want to win back for true. I don't know. But he's certainly not acting like it. And anybody, you see, over the platform here, guys, who promote intelligence, who promote, you know, we're not, we're not really like mediocre over here. So we promote intelligent reasoning. Like I told you guys before, I don't care about your politics. If you can come here and be an adult and speak truth, I'm okay with that. If you are a critical thinker, are you logical, 
and you're a patriotic Jamaican, I don't care about your politics. The truth I can always set you free. That's, that's all me know. Yes, Joe. <laughs> make, him, make him stay there, Joan. <laughs> if uh, Joan say, are you alone? Can I make him? Make him stay there. You must never hear the last time when Andrew faced the electorate in the general election. The 37% of people who come out, you never hear him admittedly said that he's very concerned about the voter turnout. And you're not too fool, you know. And anybody should be concerned. Guys, I'm going to cut it short now. I have to take this call, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining. Please share the information here and I'll catch you guys another time. Take care.